welcome back to our channel. You're here with me, Sarit and Stevie K. Okay, today, guys, we are watching Who Are the Tamil People? Yeah, um, it's from the channel Cogito. 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 Um, I'll put the links to the channel and the video in the description so you guys can also check it out. Um, this was sent to me by Kalpesh and Doc. I've been seeing them. And uh, a few other people as well, but they more or less been... Yeah. I'm sure um, Doc and Kalpesh sent it over two weeks ago. It's yeah. been a while. Well, yeah, a while. And uh, so obviously it was just finding the time to do it. Um, also, I just wanted to say, guys, if you aren't doing so already, obviously follow us on Magic Flix Official on our Instagram account. It's in the description below. Um, and also we've got a fan account, official fan account, which is called Magic Flickers. Magic and Flickers. basically Kalpesh and Duck are running that. They really that. are doing some amazing work on there. They've got memes, they've got one. videos and stuff they've the created. This one was awesome. I haven't rushed on there. I have seen it. So do check it out. It's got posters, but also they'll be doing polls on there of you know, uh, songs, videos, and uh, various other things that, yeah. you know, they'll stick on there. So if you want your request, you can put it there. If you've got any fan artwork or anything like that, they'll also put that on that account. Uh, so it's more or less engaging in another way. So, you know, you can go on a official yeah, account. Yeah, you can get through to us, obviously. And then the other will also get put your request in the Magic Flickers. Okay. Uh, yeah, Instagram official account. So everything is in the description if you need to check. But yeah, give it a go and let them know what you wanna uh, want us to react to. Now, we're going to check this video out, like I says. Uh, if you're new to our channel, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Also check out our other channel, which is Cool Art Touch. And just before I press play, I'm just gonna let you know, we apologize about the sound outside. This is the reason why we usually just do one video a day. We've been doing recently because our neighbors have got so much work going on from music to drilling to hammering. So we do apologize, uh, but this was not too long. It seems like it's coming so. along. This is South India, home to the biodiversity hotspots, the Western and Eastern Ghats, the Bengal tiger, the Nilgiri tar, the Indian elephant, and whatever this creature is. What is Here that? is also the cradle of Tamil culture. Today, there are about 80 million Tamils in the world. That's more than there are French, Colombians, or Kenyans. Wow. Most Tamils live in North and East Sri Lanka or in the southern Indian state of Tamil Nadu, literally Tamil, Tamil country. Tamil Nadu is now a state in modern India, but for thousands of years Tamilikam, or the homeland of the Tamils, was much larger and ruled by independent kingdoms. Tamil culture is the last surviving classical civilization because they've managed to keep their beliefs, culture and language intact for over 2000 years. Wow. But who are the Tamils? What is their story? And what does it have to do with $700 billion golden coconuts? Well, mm -hmm. let's find out. The Tamils, maybe more than any other people, are in love with their language. Tamil writing has been dated as far back as the 6th century BCE, from the archaeological site oh. Keiradi in India, and from the 2nd century BC at Punakari in Sri Lanka, making it one of the oldest datable languages still in use. Tamils often call their language Tamartai, which means the Tamil mother. It's more important to the Tamil identity than land, race or religion. If you want to have the most intense conversation of your entire life, just go ask a Tamil person anything about the Tamil language. Tamils also take pride in the independent origin of their language. See, you can roughly divide India linguistically in half. North Indians generally speak languages descended from Sanskrit, an Indo-European language. This language family stretches from North India all the way over to Iceland. South Indian languages like Tamil belong to a completely unrelated language family called Dravidian. Unlike Sanskrit, which like Latin is no longer spoken, modern Tamil survives as a living language for millions of speakers. Dravidians do not like it when North <laughs> India tries to push its culture or language on the south. Perfect. The earliest clear evidence of Tamil people are urn burials dating from around 1000 BC at Adich Anilor. Amazingly, they found evidence there of the worship of a god with a trident and a peacock, very like the Hindu Tamil's favourite god today, Murugan. Murugan. But the Tamils really leap into world history when the Maurya Emperor Ashoka mentions the unconquerable southern Tamil kingdoms in his rock inscriptions made between 273 and 232 BCE. Which is impressive when you consider the fact that the Maurya Empire essentially conquered everything else. 
This is right around the beginning of a Tamil golden age known as the Sangam period, lasting from the 3rd century BCE to the 3rd century CE. At this time, Tamilicum was ruled by three Tamil dynasties, the Solas, the Seras and the Panjas. Unfortunately, there were no actual pandas in the Panja kingdom. I know, I know. The Tamil kings were immeasurably rich and used their wealth to sponsor century-long poetry slams called the Sangams at the Panja capital, Madurai, where male and female poets would show off their works. These poets created thousands of poems, books and epic stories called Sangam literature. Sangam literature is unique in how it doesn't seem to belong to any single class or religion. It was written by and concerns Hindus, Jains, men, women, farmers, kings, pandas, non-pandas, and everyone in between. One great Sangam poet, Poon Koon Krenar, emphasised the equality of all humans, saying, I am a citizen of the world, and everyone in the world is related to me. Mm -hmm. This was quoted by one of India's most beloved presidents, the Tamil mm -hmm. Muslim aerospace scientist Abdul Kalam at the European Parliament in 2007. The Sangam literature tells us about a rich, cosmopolitan and multi-ethnic Tamil-speaking society 2,000 years ago, where Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism all coexisted peacefully, where kings would even invite priests to public debates on their beliefs. Sangam poems describe Madurai as so rich that it had a moat with secret underground passages large enough for elephants, wow. Greek mercenaries guarded its gates, and the scent of perfume could be smelled miles away from the city where there were folks of every race buying and selling in the bazaars or singing to the music of wandering bands. How beautiful. So how were the Tamils so rich? They were spicy. The ancient world was a bland, flavourless, unseasoned mess. Wow. It tasted a lot like English food. Yeah. This was until the Tamils taught everyone the way of the spice. A 1st century CE Greek manual for sailors, the Periplus of the Eritrean Sea, says that the Tamils export pepper and other spices along with diamonds, woven textiles, pearls, ivory, malabatrum and other luxury items. What's malabatrum? Who cares? It sounds luxurious though. Another major export was cotton and silk clothing woven by women. Indian women would dominate this global trade for the next 2000 years. Tamils traded so much that Pliny the Elder said India takes 100 million sesterces from our empire per year at a conservative estimate. That's about 10 tons of gold. Wow. China had the Silk Road, the Tamils had the... Flavor Highway? No, the Spice Boulevard. Whatever. They made themselves the centre of a global trade network that linked Europe, the Middle East, Africa, India, Southeast Asia and China. We've discovered massive hordes of Chinese, Iranian and Roman coins along the ancient Tamil coast. Tamil inscriptions have been found as far apart as Egypt and Thailand. A statue of the Hindu goddess Lakshmi got buried at Pompeii. And Tamil ambassadors met with Augustus Caesar in wow. 20 CE. Didn't know that. This trade made Tamil cooking the first international cuisine in the world. The word orange comes from the Tamil naram. Ginger comes from Tamil Inchifer, and rice in loads of European languages comes from the Tamil Arisi. Without the Tamils, Ireland's greatest contribution to world cuisine, the spice bag, would not exist. And honestly, I don't want to live in that kind of world. <laughs> what no. is Roman spice cookbook bag? had over 300 recipes using Indian spices from ostrich curry to tasty peppered brain sausage, or everyone's favourite, another laxative. Yeah. Link to mm. the cookbook is in the description, in case you need to access it. <laughs> Tamils got so rich off of their trade routes that just one temple, the Patmana Pasvami Temple, really? whose vaults were recently opened, has a treasure worth over $700 billion. This was accumulated over thousands of years from the donations from Tamil dynasties like the Seras, the Panjas, the Pallavas and the Solas. Some of the things in the temple include this golden Mahavishnu statue, tens of thousands of gold coins, a solid gold throne, golden elephants, a 5 metre long wow. diamond necklace and my personal favourite, a 30 kilogram solid gold coconut. At what point does that stop being a coconut and start being a golden ball? There are still unopened vaults in this yeah. temple, so we're still unsure of how much it's worth. Tamil merchants, monks and craftspeople worked across Southeast Asia and lived in small communities there. Tamil merchants didn't just trade pepper with Southeast Asia, they traded the spiciest thing of all. Ideas. 
In the 4th century CE on, kingdoms from Thailand to Vietnam to Indonesia were ruled by Hindu kings and wrote using Tamil writing. Modern Khmer, Javanese and Thai scripts all descend from the Tamil Pallava script. The greatest monument to this cultural exchange is the originally Hindu temple of Angkor Wat in Cambodia, the largest religious structure on earth. By the end of the 13th century, we even find the Tamil Hindu temple dedicated to Shiva all the way over in the Chinese part of Qinzhou, where a small Tamil community lived. No. The wealth and fame of the Tamil lands invited more than just merchants. A small Jewish community could be found in Kochi from the 6th century BCE. More even came as refugees after the destruction of the second temple in 70 CE. And according to local tradition, the Jews were followed by St. Thomas, the Apostle of Jesus, who landed in India in 52 CE and started converting people to Christianity. That's From Thomas, to India's on. current Syrian Christian community claims descent. In 629 CE, a mosque was built by Muslim merchants in Muziris, and you can still go visit it today, mosque. or a part of it at least, because the Portuguese blew it up in 1504, but like, it's still cool. You can still see some of it. Okay, so we're going to do a little time jump here. Let's see. Invaded by Buddhist warrior tribes, Jainism and Buddhism take over for a bit, rise of the Pallava dynasty, Hindu revival, ah, here it is. After the Sangha period, the next great Tamil golden age happened under the Sola dynasty, between the 9th and 13th centuries. Their greatest king, Raja Raja Sola, rose to the throne in 985 CE. He and his son quickly turned his modest kingdom into an empire that conquered most of South India, Sri Lanka and the Maldives. The Sola used their massive navy, the largest in Asia at the time, to control the trade routes between Southeast Asia and China. When the Srivijaya Empire threatened to block Sola access to the Straits of Malacca, the Solas launched <laughs> massive naval attacks across Indonesia and Malaysia and even kidnapped the Srivijaya king. And no one ever messed with their trade routes ever again. Oh. Along with an army containing 60,000 <laughs> war elephants, the Sola king's personal guard included the Padimuglir or women bodyguards oh. trained in Tamil martial arts and weapons. Go, go. There are also mentions of women working as advisors and ambassadors, and using their own money Jeez. to make large donations to temples. I'm messing with that. Raja Raja yeah. Sola poured his enormous wealth into building massive temples in a style called Dravidian architecture. The most wow. well-known of these being the Raja Raja Jaiswara temple in Tanjavur. This 66 meter tall Whoa. Soren monument to Raja Raja was one details. of the tallest buildings in the world at the time. Ah. Other than Raja Raja's temple, other Sola slash Dravidian architecture is also breathtaking. Like the Iyara Teswara temple, the Kanki Konta Solapuram temple, and the Champa Karaisuvarara temple. Sola temples also acted as banks. These temples received massive donations from the royals, and then they offered loans from those donations to farmers, villages, and merchants. Sola temples became this weird vehicle for redistributing wealth and reinvesting it in arts and local communities, making everyone richer. It's no wonder why when Marco Polo came here in 1273, he called the Sola lands the richest province on earth. Sola power declined in the 12th and 13th centuries. Buddhism and Islam replaced Hinduism in Southeast Asia, and Tamil lands in Kerala drifted away and developed their own language and culture, which resulted in the modern Malayalam language. Okay, so we're going to need to do another time jump. You have Muslim invasions from the north, rise of the Vijayanagarap, who built the world's second largest city, arrival of the Portuguese, destruction of the Vijayanagarap by Muslim armies, Tamil lands fracture into small states, and ah, here it is. God, no, it's took over then, huh? No, yeah, no, it, it can't be. Not you. Not you again. Bloody <laughs> hell, tis a smashing civilization you've really? got there. It would be a shame if someone were to <laughs> plunder it. Tamilicum was split into small, competing states in the 17th century, which made it easier for the newly arriving European powers to invade. By the end of the 18th century, most of South India was under British rule. The Tamils resisted the British invasion. One example is that of the Queen of Shivaganga, Velu Nachiar. To protect her kingdom from invasion, she built an army to resist the British imperialists. This army included a regiment of women soldiers. One of them, Kulili, volunteered to destroy a vital British ammunition depot that was located inside a temple. Kalili and her fellow warriors easily entered the temple as worshippers because the British taught women were harmless. Unable to sneak weapons in, they poured oil over Kalili, who then set herself on fire 
and leapt into the ammunition depot, blowing it up and securing victory for her queen in the following battles, becoming the first woman martyr in India's long battle for freedom. Wow. Despite acts like this, by 1858, the British crown had seized control of all of India. Famine quickly swept South India between 1876 and 1878, killing 8 million people. With the area devastated by famine, the British could dismantle the over 2,000 year old Tamil textile industry. As British textile manufacturers couldn't compete with Tamil textiles, so they destroyed all the Indian looms. Then they pushed Tamils out of work as craftspeople and onto tea, sugar, coffee and opium plantations in India or sent them off across their empire as indentured servants. John Sullivan, a colonial official in southern India, said, under their own dynasties, all the revenue that was collected in the country was spent in the country. Our system acts very much like a sponge, drawing up all the good things from the banks of the Ganges and squeezing them out on the banks of the Thames. Yeah, India cool. would eventually win its independence from Britain in 1947. In the first two decades of Indian independence, language became a battlefield in India. In 1950, Hindi, the most spoken language in India, was selected as the sole official language of the country, with 1965 picked as the year the changeover from English would happen. Speakers of the Dravidian languages in the south didn't like Hindi because it was Sanskrit based, which they considered more alien than English. As 1965 approached, thousands of Tamil student protesters shouted, Hindi never, English ever, in the streets of Seni. Four students set themselves on fire as a symbol of non-violent protest. Dravidian oh political parties made it clear that if Hindi became the official language of India, then Tamil Nadu would secede from India. The protesters won. The Official Languages Act Amendment of 1967 ensured the continued use of English alongside Hindi as the official language of India up until today. Even now in India, Tamil Nadu is famous for its independent streak, love of its culture and language, and for acting as the champion of Dravidian politics against the North. But Tamils don't only live in Tamil Nadu. Just a few kilometers away from there is the island nation known today as Sri Lanka, where Tamils make up 15% of the population. Sri Lanka is home to several ethnic groups. The mostly Buddhist Sinhalese are the majority, and the mostly Hindu Tamils are the second largest group. Both groups have been on the island for over 2,000 years. Right. This island was known as Ceylon when it suffered three centuries of colonialism under Portugal, the Netherlands and then their British Empire took over oh in 1796. Oh when the British arrived they were like, how can I make everything worse? Oh, let's introduce inter-ethnic conflict. In the 19th and early 20th centuries, to spur hatred, the British chose Tamils for higher positions than the Sinhalese in the government. Wow. Then in the Sri Lankan highlands, Sinhalese lands were seized by the British and enslaved Tamils from India were settled there as plantation workers. These are Indian Tamils, distinct from the Sri Lankan Tamils who have lived in Sri Lanka for much, much longer. Sri Lankan Tamils live in the north and east. Indian Tamils live in the central highlands and the Sinhalese live essentially everywhere else. When the British got kicked out of Ceylon, now Sri Lanka in 1948, the majority of Sinhalese took control of the island. Sinhalese nationalism exploded and soon anti-Tamil massacres swept the island in 1956, 1958 and 1977, which led to the formation of a guerrilla fighting group known as the Liberation Tigers of Tamil Elam, better known as the Tamil Tigers. On the 31st of May 1981, the Sri Lankan police burned the Jaffna Public Library to the ground home to 97,000 books and containing irreplaceable artifacts of Tamil history. Seeing the fire, one Tamil refugee said, It was as if my entire biography, my history and Erased. the history of the Tamils had been destroyed, wiped from the face of the earth as if we did not exist. On July 23rd, 1983, the Tamil Tigers ambushed and killed 15 Sri Lankan soldiers, causing another anti-Tamil massacre to sweep the country in an event known as Black July. The Sri Lankan civil war had begun. And look who started it. They did divide and conquer all the time. Don't the they? Tamil Tigers were fighting fight for an independent Tamil nation in the Tamil parts of the island. As the war dragged on over decades, the Tamils became infamous for inventing the explosive suicide vest and for carrying out a suicide bombing campaign across Sri Lanka. 
the Sri Lankan army retaliated with brutal attacks against the Tamil Tigers, which mostly resulted in the deaths and displacement of tens of thousands of innocent Tamil civilians. The Sri Lankan state is still undergoing investigations for committing a genocide against the Tamils. This bloody war dragged on for 26 years, until the 18th of May 2009 when the leader of the Tamil Tigers, V. Pirapakaran, was killed and the Tigers surrendered. The war took the lives of over 100,000 people, with 40,000 Tamil civilians being killed in the final few months of the war. These are rough estimates because a proper investigation hasn't been done. The war caused a mass exodus of Sri Lankan Tamil refugees to India, Australia, Europe and North America. Today around 8 million Tamils live outside of India and Sri Lanka. From the 19th century onwards they went as indentured labourers across the British Empire, especially to Malaysia, Singapore, South Africa, Fiji, Mauritius and the Caribbean, where many have kept their Tamil identities. Tamil is actually an official language in Singapore and Malaysia. Well I think now it's time to take a look at Tamil culture. Religion. Today about 88% of the Tamil population of Tamil Nadu are Hindus, 6% are Christians, 5.8% are Muslims and Jains, Buddhists and Sikhs make up the rest. The most important Tamil festival is Thai Pongal, a harvest festival dedicated to the Hindu sun god Surya that usually occurs on the 14th of January. This festival is celebrated by all Tamils regardless of religion though. Pongal means to boil or overflow and refers to the traditional dish of new harvest rice boiled in milk with raw sugar. Pongal celebrations include decorating cows, ritual bathing, parades, prayers, dances, creating art and getting together with friends and family and exchanging gifts. During Pongal in Tamil Nadu you might also see a jelly wow. kuppa. In this over 2000 year old sport Ooh. an Indian bull is released oh into a crowd of people and men attempt to grab the hump on the bull's back with both arms and hang on to it for as long as possible, attempting to bring the bull to a full stop, thus taming the bull. Oh if they do so they get a prize, if no one tames the bull the owner of the bull gets a prize. Ooh. There have been many attempts to ban this sport in recent years which has caused massive popular backlash. Another interesting Tamil holiday is a May festival the god Aravan, who is worshipped by transgender people called Tevrunar in Tamil. At this annual festival at Kovakam, you will see ceremonial marriages between festival goers and the god Aravan, along with beauty pageants and dances hosted with the support of the Tamil Nadu government. In 2008, Tamil Nadu became the first state in India to allow people to legally identify as a third gender. Well. Arts. Tanjabur paintings and solo bronzes are some of the Tamil's greatest contributions to world art. But one of the more humble yet distinct features of Tamil art is the kolam, which decorates the front of almost every Tamil home. These are geometrical and floral designs made of rice flour. Each day the kolam is crafted by women and then erased the next morning to make room for a new one. Today in Tamil Nadu, huts to five star hotels will all have a kolam. One of the most treasured pieces of Tamil literature is the Tirukuru by Tiru Vulavar, which had its origins in the Sangam period but was finalised a few centuries after. This is a masterpiece in ethics and living well. The Tirukuru is made up of three books of wise sayings on virtue, wealth and love, all delivered in quick two line poems. For example, the greatest virtue of all is non killing, truthfulness cometh only next. It also just stops midway and talks about how to build good forts and I'm always down for some fort talk. Mm. Charity and kindness are also key aspects and it emphasises non-violence and vegetarianism. Avoidance of killing and eating the meat of even one animal is more meritorious than a thousand sacrifices. The mm -hmm. Tirukural is vital to Tamil culture. It pops up in songs, films and books. Every bus in Tamil Nadu is legally obligated to have a verse from the Tirukural on it. One of the Tamil's most famous dances is Paratanateum. This dance tells a story through complicated mudras or hand gestures, facial expressions and body posture. It also just looks incredible. <laughs> Food. Rice is a staple of the mostly vegetarian Tamil diet. Bananas and plantains, mm. jackfruit, coconut, lentils, tamarind and mango are also commonly used ingredients along with a huge amount of spices. Traditionally, a Tamil meal is eaten off of a banana leaf. 
Some favourite Tamil foods include the light and fluffy idli, the fried and spicy vadai, the crispy dosa, and the delicious fried banana bonda. Mm. And no Tamil dish is complete without a side of sambar, chutney, or in Sri Lanka, coconut sambal. Mm. Tamils also love their coffee, which they brew in this unique South Indian device. Cinema. Tamil people are passionate about cinema. Based in the Kodobakum neighborhood in Sena, the Tamil film industry, or Kollywood, is the second largest film industry in India. Mani Ratnam's gangster Hello. epic Nayakam was included in Time Magazine's 100 Best Movies of All Time list. I actually watched a movie with one of Tamil cinema's superstars, Rajini Kant, where this happens, and it was an absolutely amazing few hours. Tamil cinema has even bled into Tamil politics. Three chief ministers of the Tamil Nadu state have risen out of Tamil cinema. Tamil cinema acts as a way for Tamils to preserve their independent and original culture by producing films in the Tamil language based on Tamil ideas and culture. Um, yeah, and that was the video, guys. Um, quite interesting, actually. Interesting. So many things you don't know about. Mm. Well, sorry, I just pointed out Kamala Hassan's poster because obviously you guys know that if you haven't, if you don't know, we interviewed Shruti Hassan just not so long ago, it was yeah. like one week ago, we posted the video of our interview with her. So obviously seeing Kamala Sun's name, we're like, eh, eh. <laughs> um, but yeah, from everything, I mean, the stuff, I mean, one thing is the language, well, the oldest language, more or less ever. And, but then, it's, you know, that didn't sort of surprise me because loads of people more or less have written in the past saying that so I've like gone okay the thing is we don't know anything like I said I mean we watch this and we're just taking it from what it is because obviously we don't know so we can't say yeah if it's true or not other people will be able yeah. to tell us if it is or you know if there's any discrepancies or anything like that but I, I found it really interesting I found it um, engaging the way that he told it yeah and using the animation and the actual videos and stuff like that. It was, like he said, it was, it was educational so with a bit of... It's it's like basically children here in the UK can basically watch it and I learn something from it. Thing. Yeah, they're finding and it, it like should, the animation. Things like this should be in schools because like with the animation, yeah. with the, um, the stuff that he was teaching or, you know, like making us learn sort of thing, it, it, it didn't, you know, it, it was engaging mm. uh, and enjoyable. And the thing is, I mean, obviously, learning all that they went through. I mean, all that, it, it just felt like, you know, they, they were way ahead of their time be, before anyone else. Yeah. And they, like you said, they had things that other countries didn't yeah. have, like from the spices and, you know, various other things. They had so much that they ended up obviously sharing it with the world. You know, regardless of how it, or, you know, and not only that, traveling around the world. So, you know, you know, loads of things can be found all across that they were there even before, you know, time like, you know, building and, you know, sharing everything that they were learning, creating, making a part of them has been all around the world so... from the language and everything. And then it was on top of that, it was just like all these countries, you know, took over from the British to um, with the whole conquering divide always, you know what, I can't see anyone getting along and taking everything from everyone, sponging it all off, you know what I mean? Um, but like I said, dividing everyone and it wasn't just one country, it was one after the other and then, you know, breaking everyone up. But yet they still held on to their culture, cool. to their beliefs, mm. to their language, yeah. to everything. I mean, I was like broken when they said about that library with all yeah those books of you know history and people's you know it's like basically people's biography people's life being erased it was just like oh my god that that was you know oh it just like really upsets you kind of thing regardless of where you're from it's just like it's horrible because mm. everyone's entitled to know that everyone's entitled to you know yeah, yeah but, i mean the world is entitled to know because it's that's what is yeah, interesting why you know everyone wants to hold on to their own religions their cultures and you know where they come from and you know they're all looking around for dinosaurs uh, millions of years ago but they burning all these things that you know can teach you so much about different religions different you know what i mean countries and stuff like that people's backgrounds back languages where we all come from destroying all that 
And we're going to to know that as well, you know, and not only the people that it belongs to got more entitled to, entitlement to it to anyone else. You know, no, no one else would like it if it happened to them. But I'm glad that they held on to the language yeah, with more than anything. Yeah, you know, they've gone through, like, taking yeah. over for so many years that they have, you know, and, they and have they've, let go. And also with, like, the Hindu, they were saying that they didn't want... Um, it to be a main the main language, language yeah yeah they rather like have uh, well, their own like, language and English yeah yeah which yeah. which we see in the they movies you can see that, that they speak it. English with their yeah. you know own language they they you don't see much you know and and it is the thing isn't it that unless so you didn't see it and it's good um that's why like I said I always say we appreciate getting sent these kind of videos shame we didn't do it sooner um and but we learn so much and exactly. not only that like the it's things that we don't know. don't know about like because some of them are quite similar as well if you think about it like you know obviously the harvest it comes like harvest and we call it um something else like in Zeke language what's it called when you do harvest yeah, Vasaki. Vasaki, and then obviously there's it's similar it's the same kind of thing but obviously named differently and they celebrate in different ways because obviously you guys know we, we Punjabi we are so yeah. um you know yeah. but um it all of it, it's, it's, it's like, you know, from the, I mean, the, the, the temples we have seen, we've done some videos you of them. You see how much pride as well, also with the, like, the, the patterns that they do outside the temples every day to do something. No, like outside the, the homes. Yeah, and the homes. And, and the, the hotels, temples. everything, you know what I mean? But not only that, the attention, to if you see them, detail to every single thing. Like, but, I'd want to go, but I'd, I'd be like going around so slowly looking at everything in detail so much in every building but that they i was going to say from the spices to everything yeah. even the food it, everything seems like you want to do sun now, everything on. seems like it's done from the heart that's yeah. what i'm trying to say yeah, yeah. you know like from the buildings that are created from the food that is made from the movies that the people yeah. create oh, no, um, to that's... their language to their beliefs to their culture yeah. To you know everything, it just feels like it's all part of the yeah. heart. Like you I mean, said, they've been through that. They want to hold on to it. And not only that, they, they, it's like they were saying. It was like they're all like one. They see it like we all, you know what I mean. And that's how it should be. And you know, and and it's, it's nice. Fascinating. And but the thing is, it's just like it sort of breaks you that you know as history goes, you know, there's so much that you gotta suffer and try to fight for. And so much loss. Uh, and regardless of, can you imagine people never done any? I mean, obviously, you got to grow and move forward, and you would have, they would have reached that to share. Because, like you said, the food everywhere else would have been bland, like English food. English food. Uh, it, and I pointed to no, Sri because Sri eats uh, more than me. You have sandwiches and, uh, you know, Here English food. Let's and go there. to, like, you know, come go to an English book. I just, it's I'm an nice Indian one that the bus. No, I'm not saying criticizing, but like he said, he would have been just bland. Or you know, yeah, I, I wouldn't agree. be able to I last. Agree. I wouldn't be able to no eat English chance. food Man. all the time. It's just here where I want a little change. But it's, it's constant Indian food. The thing is, the colors, the flavors, yeah. but everything you can see it from the buildings to oh, the people to the sorry. cars they were. Oh my god, everything how is. Like I said, it's from the heart, and it seems like so our world is full of color. Everything, yeah. Our culture is full of color. Yeah. Our food, you know. On the banana leaf, everything is full of colour. Mm. It's it's that, mm. and that's how we live our lives. And they, sh you know, spread it with everyone else who comes. Because we we chat, and you know, it's like wonderful people from yeah, you know, yeah. and all that. You just like wow. Definitely. And what we'll, we'll place Switzerland so we've been saying? Oh, she wants to go to Sri Lanka, Malaysia. Malaysia. She wants to go yeah. to Always South steady. India. Yeah. You know. Uh, Kerala for me, definitely, it's watching and this, it's, different it's, places of it's India really kind of thing. Interesting, and it reminds me of like when, I know it's not uh, the same place, but Singapore, when we went to Goa, like Goa. We went to Goa, we we, we I'm learned not saying that those so, all places are in no, the same place, just in case no, people are saying. We learned so much about history so. there as well. We had no idea like how you know the um, how um, Christianity had been brought into Goa as and well. We had Portuguese no idea. and all that, and, and it was so like so interesting that we went on all these little lovely journeys every day to see different um, so churches so much you can and so, so much. You can but anyway, that was a video, guys. Let us know if any other is it. Let me just have a look. If there's any other Cogito videos you want us to watch or any nice other watch, yeah, educational nice video, videos, is there any other videos that you know we can learn about? Tamil or any other part of India yeah. that we don't know of. I mean, um, yeah, anything you can recommend. And also write your take on it, what you guys thought. Um, and if you're new to our channel, like I said, don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I will put the links down to this channel below as well. Uh, hopefully we'll see you on the next one. See you take guys. Care, see you soon. Bye. Bye.